stories, forgotten and unused, until volunteer Union Pacific employees took it upon themselves to restore it. Restoration efforts by organizations and individuals were responsible for most of the engines here at Rail Fair. There are stories behind them all about the engines and about the people who saved them. The museum restored this one. This is the old Virginian Trucking Empire, number 13. It was uh, renumbered by the engine crew because they thought 13 was a little unlucky. And so most of its years it was spent with the number 15. We've restored it back to the way it looked when it was built by the Baltimore Motor Board in 1873. This Virginia and Truckee locomotive, the Ingo, pulled the trains and helped win the West. Built in 1875, it was once headed for the scrap heap. Its rescue is a story straight out of Hollywood. And then it was sold around 1930s, uh, 38 or something through the movies. And probably the only reason it's hanging around now is because of the movies. Uh, a lot of the studio saved a lot of those motors. Most of them have been cut up for scrap. Today, it's owned by the Nevada Railroad Museum. This turn of the century locomotive, the Great Northern 1247, spent 60 years on the tracks for British Rail. Bill Smith was its savior. In 1959, large numbers of steam locomotives were being scrapped and replaced by diesels. And in fact, this one, the old lady here, she would have been scrapped in another two or three months had I not made an approach to British Rail to buy it. I remember as a small boy, there was no greater excitement than seeing a scene of steam engine at work. And that primarily is why I decided to try and preserve one. Preserving this engine from the 1920s was a task undertaken by a town, St. Johnsbury, Vermont. We have a small railroad here. It's about a mile long, and we have about 20 freight cars and this locomotive. The Los Angeles to San Francisco run was once handled by a slightly bigger engine, the Southern Pacific 4449. The famous engine was active only 15 years. Southern Pacific donated it to the city of Portland, where it sat in the park for more than 20 years. And it was a Herculean uh, effort that brought it out in 1976. The 4449 was just one of the one-inch scale miniatures on display that provided a unique perspective. You can get an overall view. It's like being in a helicopter 300 feet up, looking at these. And the detail on those models is absolutely phenomenal. Working on a slightly larger scale is Frank Allen, a former sprint car builder who turned to trains when he retired. I had to build it from scratch. There was no, no parts available, no plans available. I had to draw my own plans, which I did by coming down and measuring the uh, train in the museum. It took Frank eight years to finish. He doesn't want to know how much he spent. Probably if I figured it out, I could jump off a bridge. If my wife saw the numbers, I wouldn't have to jump. In the end, rail fare is more than just engines and trains. It's a reverence for a bygone time. Oh. 